Chibuzo Math Physics. Uh, I'll be taking you through reanalysis. Reanalysis is a branch of mathematics. Actually, it is pure mathematics. Uh, you know, in mathematics, we have uh, both pure and um, excuse me, my math. We have both pure and uh, we have applied math. Uh, so, pure mathematics is basically proving concept. Uh, trying to show that a statement is true, uh, trying to show that the statement is false. Uh, from my first video in this reanalysis, I take you through proving a contradiction uh, where you prove that uh, a certain number is irrational. And I told you, first of all, you start by saying that that number is rational. And if the number is rational, it has to be represented in form of fraction. If it is represented in form of a fraction, it means it has to be in the form of A divided by B or in form of M divided by N, where MN or AB is equal to 1 and uh, the N, the denominator of that number is not equal to 0 because when they are equal to 0, it is undefined. It is uh, undefined and we don't do with uh, those mathematical errors. Uh, today, I will be taking you through a uh, reanalysis. Reanalysis is about renumbers. Uh, it is all about renumbers. And uh, there is nothing to calculate here, actually. What you are going to do is to prove the concept. You prove. How do you get this concept? Uh, it is very easy, and I, I hope you will enjoy it. If you are joining us, this is Augustine Chibuzo Galagas. And uh, I want to welcome you to my YouTube channel. Uh, do well to subscribe so that uh, you'll be notified each time I up upload a new video. I have decided to come face to face in this video in order to explain to you uh, why this pure mathematics is very important that you understand the basic ideas and the logic behind it. Uh, so we are going to be dealing with the distributive property. Uh, distributive property is a property that allows us to distribute some certain variables and then uh, uh, explain how we get that variable. Distributive property. So we are going to be using uh, a, a certain distributive property in this question. Uh, let's take a question and try to prove uh, how we got the concept. Uh, that is all we do in uh, pure math. There is no calculation like the way we do in applied mathematics. So here we have A union B intersection C to be equal to A union B intersection or uh, intersection A union C. Yeah. This is the equation we are going to solve. Just for the purpose of doubt, let me confirm that the equation is correct. A union B intersection A union B intersection C A union B intersection A union C and uh, it is correct. So we are going to prove how we get this. We are all trying to prove how we get this. Uh, but before then, uh, let me introduce to you what we call this implied. This also means uh, if and only if. If you cover both ends, it means if and only if. We will be using member. This is a, a symbol of member. It's different from this. Uh, the difference between this and this is this is a member, but it belongs. Uh, this is an epsilon. This is an epsilon, the smallest number uh, in the axis. But we are not using this epsilon. We are using uh, the member. Uh, the, this implies if and only if. So it's good you get used to it. The way we know how to use equal sign, uh, less than equal to, greater than equal to, and all that. So, how do we prove that uh, A, before I forget, uh, this means union. 
and this means intercession. So A is in union with B intercession C. And A is in union with B and it is also in intersecting A union C. So it is good you define these basic things. Eh? Okay. At any point you can uh, pause the video and try to follow what we are doing. Uh, what you are expected to do is simply to show that A union B intersection C is contained in A union B intersection A union C. This symbol here means contained. It means contained. That this element is contained in this element. That is what you are trying to do. You are trying to prove that this is equal to that. And if this is equal to that, what? Now when you need to, we need to show that this is contained in that. Pure mathematics. Is it not fun? I don't know. Okay. Let us see what to do. We are going to introduce an arbitrary element. Because this is a, like abstract things, you know, abstract ideas, things you think logically. So we introduce some abstract things that do not even belong here. And that is the only way we solve math, eh? hmm? especially if you are doing pure mathematics. So we lay it x to be an arbitrary, arbitrary element. Can I add element? Wow. Arbitrary element. <laughs> of what? Of the set. Such that this x, which is an arbitrary element, will be a member of this element, A union B intersection C. Let me get rid of some of these things. I can write our question somewhere so that I, I get rid of this and then we continue. I can write A union B intersection C is equal to A union B intersection A union C. By doing that, I can get rid of this. So that if X is a member of A union B intersection C, what we are saying is that it implies that X is a member of A or it means that X is a member of B intersection C. If X is a member of A and X is a member of B intersection C, this implies that X is a member of A, X is a member of B, and if B is intersecting C, X is also a member of C. So we can introduce this color bracket so that we have X such that X is a member of A or X is a member of B and X is a member of C. I hope you are following. If X is a member of A, B and C, 
What does that tell you? It tells you that X is a member of a union B, which means that X is also a member of a union C, because here we have X as a member of A, and we have X as a member of B intersection C, which means that X is a member of these two sets, A and B. They are distributing, you distribute the property, so X is a member of A union C, because B intersection C is also a member of A. Is also a member of A. So if B intersection C is a member of A, A union C is a member of X, and A union B is a member of X, which means that uh, like what we have here, A union B intersection C is contained in A union B intersection A union C. I hope you are following this. And we can take this to be our equation one. We are proving the concept. We are proving the concept. So now we can say that conversely Conversely means on the other side, opposite, because we put from left to right, showing that this is equal to that. So now, conversely, we can introduce the same arbitrary element we did in the beginning, so that X will be a member of A union B intersection A union C. Good, this is supposed to remain, but it is okay. We are the one here and we know what we are doing. So, if X is a member of A union B and X is a member of A union C, it means that X is a member of A union B and X is also a member of A union C. What does that tell you? It tells you that if X is a member of that and that, it simply means that A union B intersection A union C will be equal to X such that X is a member of A, X is also a member of B, and X is also a member of C. And if X is a member of A, B, and C, what does that tell you? It tells you that X is a member of A union B intersection C. And if X is a member of A union intersection C, you can see that X is a member of A union B intersection C in this way now, which becomes an equation two. So from the equation one that we got to this second equation, it simply means that A union B intersection A union C is contained in A union B intersection C, which implies that A union B intersection C is equal to A union B intersection A union C, which is what we have in our equation. And that is how we prove uh, that a certain concept is true or a certain concept is false. I hope you enjoy the video. Do where to pause the video as you follow through 
follow systematically and you are good to go. Otherwise, subscribe to my channel and I will notify you whenever I upload new video. I remain your friend, Galagash. See you in my next video. God bless you.